Hello everyone and welcome to the Henry Schein webinar series on YouTube. I'm Dr. Gary Severance. Today we welcome back Dr. Bobby Stanley. Dr. Stanley practices with her husband in Cary, North Carolina. And Dr. Bobby Stanley has an incredible passion for not only dentistry but also business. Today she shares some insight into the Henry Schein practice analysis and how that data can really make your practice grow stronger. Dr. Stanley, welcome. Thanks, Gary. Hi, guys. I'm Dr. Bobby Stanley with Stanley Institute. I'm also a practicing dentist in Cary, North Carolina with Stanley Dentistry. And I want to talk with you guys today about something that I implemented in my office a long time ago that I found very valuable. It's a critical tool for reopening our practice. When we closed our dental doors, I immediately reached out to my Henry Schein rep and, and asked if I could get my practice analysis because I wanted to look at my numbers. So today I wanna to talk with you about what a practice analysis is and how you can implement it in your office so that you could get va uh, value out of it the same way that I have. So first of all, let me just say, I'm talking to you as a business owner. We're small business owners who provide health and dentistry to our patients. I realize that we are healthcare providers. We do focus on our patients' health, and that's number one most important. However, we also own a dental practice, and our team members rely on us for salary so that they can feed their families and take care of their families. So please, during this presentation, let's think like business owners. So, where does your practice stand in 2020? How has COVID impacted the financial status of your practice? I know how it's imp impacted me. I don't like it. So I've taken my practice analysis to help me incorporate some things that I can do to change my 2020 to be a, a better year. Um, do you know what you need to focus on? Do you know what changes that you may need to do? And how can you make 2020 your best year ever? because I believe that you still have that ability even though we've been closed for a while. But remember, you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. And so you have to look at where your practice was and where it was heading to know where you're gonna take it in the, in the future for 2020. So what if you had a custom report based on your practice's performance? Or maybe a custom report based on all your colleagues in the area's performance and their numbers? Or what if you had a custom report based on national averages? What would that do for you? What if you could put all of those together in a snapshot of your practice's financial status currently? And what if it added proven strategies on how you can improve uh, the things that are specific in your practice? That would be like having your own personal trainer, your own personal chef, and your own personal coach. I know lots of times people look at movie stars and they're like, well, if I had somebody to train me to, to cook my food and coach me on what's best to say, I could be too. Well, this is your practice's opportunity because I believe that the Henry Shine practice analysis is truly a personal trainer slash chef slash coach for the financial future of your dental practice. So what's included in this practice analysis? Well, first and foremost, there's a fee comparison. And it's so important to know where your fees stand in your local community and nationally. Because if you don't know where you rank, you may be undercharging or even overcharging in certain areas and just have no idea. So what percentile do you fall into? And do you have some fees that are on the low range and some fees that are on the high range? Are they all across the board? So where, where are you? And do you need to adjust any of these fees to make it more realistic? If you have something that looks kind of like what you see on the screen, the screen highlights 50 percentile, which is average, then 60 percentile, and then the red is where the current fees in your office may lie. You're all across the board you have no idea where you need to be. I will tell you that my team members have always felt like we were one of the higher priced dental offices in the area. And some of that's because of what's reflected within the office, because we do only use the best in our dental office. They were shocked to realize that we were really in the 60 percentile, just a little bit better than average dental fee. 
So when the team members realized that what we were charging for our patients was actually a more realistic fee, they felt better about presenting those fees to the patient. And that's what you need to be able to translate to your team members. And it's okay to be in the 90 percentile. There is nothing wrong with that. But you have to be offering 90 percentile uh, services. And we'll talk about that. Another opportunity is coding opportunities. What does this mean? It informs us how to code correctly. When we code correctly and we put in the right code for the patient, the patient gets better reimbursement from their insurance. And every patient wants to maximize their insurance benefits. But it also can increase your cash flow in your office and also keep you out of trouble from making errors that you could be fined or worse for. And nobody wants to do that. And an example is if you code a D0140 versus a D9110, the difference between these is an exam fee versus a um, palliative fee. If you're seeing somebody for an emergency and you're going to charge them an exam fee, most insurance companies only, only offer two exam fees in a year. If you use up one of their exam fees, they may not come back to you for a dental exam and cleaning because they don't have that benefit. Or they might come and be upset with you that you did a third exam and their insurance is not paying for it. And the correct code almost always is more of a palliative fee because you're actually seeing the patient and doing something temporarily to get them out of pain. You're not just doing an exam. So be careful if you're charging out a limited exam instead of a palliative exam. And I will tell you that when you see this on your Henry Schein practice analysis, you're going to say, huh, I'm not sure I realized that. More importantly, I don't know that your team members realize that. And you may be a doctor that's tracking every single thing that's going through your practice software so you know every code that's being charged out, but you may not. And until you educate your team and yourself about this sort of thing, you may be losing lots of dollars and your patients may be losing lots of insurance dollars. So this is how this practice analysis, analysis could help you. Also, another thing that it does is it points out your top 25 codes. What 25 codes do you bill the most out of your office? Do you know that answer? How much do you produce from these codes? And if you increase these codes by maybe 1% or put them in the next percentile or put them in an appropriate percentile, what would that mean for your bottom line? And if you did that, what would it, how would it help you recoup what you've lost during your closure of COVID-19? Those are things that we need to think about as a practice owner. So what we're not trying to do is we're not trying to gouge our patients or overcharge them. We're trying to make sure our fees are appropriate for the services that we offer. And Henry Schein can help you see that. And if you look at that practice analysis and you feel you don't need to make any changes, fine. But I will be willing to tell you that there will be changes that you will be grateful that you're making and you'll be grateful for having the practice analysis. Another thing, hygiene recare, recall opportunity. Do you know how many active patients you actually have in your practice? I'm not saying open your practice software and look at the number of active patients because that's not an active patient. An active patient is who has actually been in your office for hygiene in the last 18 months. That's an active patient. Sometimes even the last 12 months. So do you know how many patients that you have? Maybe you do. But how many of these active patients have had a hygiene procedure in the last year or maybe the last six months? That may be something that you may not know, and you certainly want to know that, and I assure you that your hygienists want to know that. And how many hygiene appointments do you need to have available to service these people? If you have more patients than you have hygiene appointments, you might want to consider adding another hygienist. On the other hand, if you have more active patients and you have holes in your hygiene, you may want to consider how efficient you are at rescheduling your active patients. So this is one way that um, Henry Schein can help you with these opportunities. So it helps your hygienist and you. I will tell you for me and my hygiene team, we meet on a regular basis and they reschedule everybody in the operatory. So in their mind, they said 98% of our patients are active in hygiene because we reschedule everybody before they walk out the door. 
What they're not taking into consideration are the people who call and cancel and don't reschedule. And those are the people that tend to fall through the cracks. So maybe we need to put in some more uh, protocols to take care of people who call and cancel and then they don't reschedule. But you don't know that unless you know the numbers. And that's one way that this can help. What are some other opportunities? Well, there's a major film opportunity. How many of your new patients are actually getting a full mouth x-ray? And then how about bite wing opportunity? How many bite wings are taken in your practice? So in hygiene, if your protocol is to take bite wings yearly, then each of your patients should have had bite wings in the last year. If they have not, somebody is missing the boat and we need to figure out where, the, where we need to do more training to make sure that we're taking care of our patients. Also, periodic exam opportunities. How often should a patient have an exam and are they receiving it? And then uh, periodontal opportunities. What percentage of hygiene patients are periodontal patients? In a normal dental office, is it 30%? Is yours at 30%? Maybe we need to look at it and see if it's where you think it is. Because lots of times we go in this gut feeling and our team members go in this gut feeling. Well, I feel like we're at 25 to 30%. And then you get your practice analysis back and you're at 10%. And you're like, guys, are you rolling up your sleeves and, and seeing a hygiene patient and charging a profi? Maybe we need to reevaluate what is periodontal disease and what is not so that we can code appropriately, so that we get paid appropriately and our patient gets reimbursement from their insurance company appropriately because we do want to make sure that we're coding the right way. And then there's also a procedure mix that uh, Henry Schein will help you with that breaks down the total production in each category of services in your office and the percentage. So what does that look like to you? It helps you understand where you're excelling. Oh my God, I'm doing a lot of ortho cases. I love ortho, yay, but I'm not doing many veneers. Why not? So where are you lacking? And if you're lacking in certain areas, do you need more training? Or do your team members need more training? Or do we need more training on verbiage, how to present treatment so that we can start um, elevating these services to a higher percentage level? So. That's what the procedure mixture helps you to look at. And honestly, in my opinion, it's one of the most important places to focus during this downtime. It's the number one place that I wanted to see when my office closed because I wanna know where we're excelling, but more importantly, where are we lacking? Where do we need to put our focus? Where do we need more training for me and for my team so that we can actually service our patients the way our patients deserve to be serviced? And then also it provides you information about insurance networking. How can you in adjust your insurance programs that you can, boot, you, can, um, you can accept to boost your income? One of the things that a lot of doctors have asked me during this downtime is, do you think I need to start dropping some of my contracted insurance companies? And I've said, I don't think so, but you need to look at the numbers. I'm not sure if this is the time. This is how you look at the numbers. Is now the time to drop this insurance company's contract and how would that impact your overall collections? So Henry Shine Analysis can help you make a wise decision. None of these, this information in this analysis is information you need to be going by a gut feel. You do not need your team members saying, I think we need to do this. This is not a thinking process. This is the facts and we need an analysis so that we can look at our practice and our business and make wise decisions for staying profitable and financially sound when we reopen our doors. Again, we, we're taking care of our patients. We're offering great health care to our patients. We're just making sure that our patients are getting reimbursed the way they should and that we're financially able to pay our team members and keep the doors open. So. How do you use this practice analysis once you get it? Well, the first thing is, doctors, you have to share the numbers with your team. And I know that makes some of you guys uncomfortable. I know that you think that if you tell them how much you're actually collecting, that they're going to think that you're taking all that money home. And I'm going to tell you, they already think that. So that's even more reason why you need to share the numbers with them so that they understand the facts. They need to see where things are and they need to take some ownership in your practice so that they can make sure it's financially sound for them also. So six ways, 
Six ideas to fully utilize your practice analysis. Let's walk through these. Number one, share with the share in a team meeting. The first thing that I do when I get this analysis is I call a team meeting. We sit down. I let them see the, the numbers and we go through the numbers and we talk about why are we undercharging for this and overcharging for that. I didn't realize that we had lowered our implant fee to do more implants and in doing so we were lower than the insurance reimbursement. Why would anybody ever do that? That was ridiculous and the only way we knew to do that was because we felt like it would bring in more patients and it did not bring in more patients. So we immediately moved from that philosophy and said, let's look at the facts, let's look at the numbers, and let's realistically charge for our services so that our patients appreciate what they're getting and our team members actually can uh, take care of their families. Um, also, look at the coding correction page. Are you coding correctly? That's so important because if you are not uh, you could get in trouble, but you're also leaving money on the table for you and leaving money on the table for your team members. So take a, a look at that. And then discuss, uh, I'm sorry, leaving money on the table for your patients, not your team members, because your patient's reimbursement is going to be less if you're coding incorrectly. Discuss missed opportunities with your team members, and that's so important. It's not a personal um you're not pointing your finger at them personally if they haven't taken all the x-rays that they need to take or we're missing out on periodontal exams what they don't understand is you're not training them appropriately so it's actually your issue if they're not doing things correctly it's the doctor issue so doctors you need to train your teams appropriately and the only way you can do this is come together and say guys we're missing opportunities and I want to let you know that I feel like I have not trained you appropriately so here's what we're going to do moving forward and then take it as a training opportunity not as a blaming opportunity and they will appreciate that spend time doctor you spend time evaluating your procedures look and see which procedures are on the low end as far as um, the number of services being provided and which are on the higher end of the number of services being provided and then decide for yourself do you want to do more of those services it may be that you only do five percent of root canals in your of, of the services in your office only five percent of root canals and you may not want to do root canals and that's fine on the other hand if you love root canals and you're only doing five percent then maybe the verbiage isn't correct when treatment's being presented to a patient maybe they don't understand the urgency of getting something done and or they're moving on to the specialist when they don't when they don't understand that you could do it yourself um, so just make sure that you're looking at these these procedure mix and then have an individual meeting with your hygiene team to look at hygiene because I'm gonna tell you your hygienist they want to know how they're performing to take care of their patients because your team members want to take care of patients and if they feel like that they're missing um, patient availability for patients in hygiene or recare procedures aren't being done efficiently, they will up the ante to take care of their patients because we all want to take care of our patients. But the only way your team members know this is if you share this information with them. So make sure you're sharing it. And then lastly, doctors, you need to look at your insurance, the insurance network networks that you're participating in and decide if now is a good time to adjust your participation. And maybe that's something you can discuss with your financial team or your administrative team, your insurance uh, team, to decide if now's the time that we need to drop an insurance company or maybe do more with an insurance company. But when you have the facts, you can make the right decisions. So use this time of pause in our society to grow your practice, guys. Because if you can't do that now, now while we have downtime, while our practice is gearing back up to get busy, if you can't do it now, you're never going to have enough time to do it. So I urge you to get your Henry Shine practice analysis right away and let's do this because guys, 2020 can be our best year ever. It can be. We just have to plan and prepare and therefore it will be. So uh, take advantage of the 
of the practice analysis today, call your Henry Schein rep and go ahead and get the numbers to them so that they can get you the information back and you can look at your practice from a factual uh, way. If you have any questions at all, guys, please reach out and email me. My email is on the board, drbobby at stanleyinstitute.com. I'm happy to share any of my personal experience that I've had with the practice analysis or any feedback that my team has given me from the practice analysis. If you feel hesitant um, presenting it to your team, reach out to me. I can give you some pointers on things to say and um, how you want to do it in a team environment. I'm happy to share that with you. I love doing the business of dentistry, so this stuff just tickles me, so I don't mind uh, responding to you guys. So please feel free to, to reach out to me. Thank you, Dr. Stanley, for an incredible insight into the business of dentistry. Now, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please email us at webinars at henryshine.com. And please subscribe to the YouTube page by clicking the button below. That way you'll get the most recent notifications. Again, until we see you again or you see us, stay safe and stay informed.